This is one of those times where my warts and all policy of running a website means I get to admit screwing up. We're shooting this video shortly after I posted that We Gotta Talk To, where I talked about people messing around with the CG trying to be a better 3D pilot. Shortly after that, I got several emails. People asked me how I set the CG precisely, so I thought I'd show that. In setting up to do this video, I realized that I had read the instructions wrong and my CG was about 3 eighths of an inch too far forward. That's on my Flex Innovations Cap 232 G2. So I'm going to fix that. We're going to show you exactly how we do all of this anyway. But in the process, I'm going to wind up changing the CG on here, get it back to where Kiki and then wanted it at Flex. And then we'll take it out and check it out and see how it flies. And we'll make a video on that too. So naturally I start out telling you make sure you follow the instructions. And this is precisely where I figured out that I had screwed up my CG. I don't know if I read this wrong or got distracted or what, but I did screw this up and we're going to fix that. This is a tapered wing, so we start out marking the CG location on the side of the fuselage, four and eighth inches back from the rear edge of the landing gear slot. I know it's not easy to see with the studio lights, but there is a groove in the side of the fuselage right at that point. And that gives us a great point to start that measurement from. I used that straight edge to make a mark where the CG goes on the side of the fuselage right near the wing. I don't want to make it on the wing yet, and I'll show you why. I put a wide piece of masking tape out onto the wing from that mark and try and keep it pretty square to the fuselage. And again, because this is a tapered wing, we can't use the leading or trailing edges to put this line out and keep it square to the wing. And I use a little square to move that mark from the fuselage to the wing. But again, we're just going to make a small mark. We could probably get a reasonably square line out onto the wing this way, but if we use the root of the wing, we can get a much square line out. And I repeat that process on the other wings before I take them off the fuselage. Now I can use my 18 inch square and get that line straight out onto the wing using the root as the reference point. This way I know that that CG line is correctly placed and it doesn't angle to the front or rear of the wing. Dennis Shaver is a good friend of mine and he's the best builder I've ever seen. He was watching me set up the CG on one of my planes and told me that when I stuck my finger on that line, when I lifted the plane up, my finger actually rolled off of the line by almost a half an inch. And I think that's just natural. When we find that line with our fingers with the plane on a table, then lift the plane up, our fingers roll back, and we go off of the line. I know this doesn't sound like much, but missing a CG location by a quarter to three-eighths of an inch on a lot of planes can really influence the handling. Plus, this is a simple thing to avoid once we know that we're doing it. This is my Easy Balancer 2. It's not cheap, but I love this thing. Just for starters, it gets rid of my fingertips underneath that mark on the wing. While the whole balancer is pretty rugged, I love these saddles that are right on ball bearings so that it's very easy to move them. Because there's nothing dragging on the plane, we can be very precise in setting up the CG. And when I line up those lines that we made on the wing panels with these cuts in the saddles, I know that the plane is exactly square to the balancer. And that more or less adds just another level of accuracy. When I messed the CG up on this plane the first time around, it's because I put those lines in the wrong place. The easy balancer made sure that it was balanced exactly on those lines. All I have to do is look under the wing at any time to confirm that I'm still on those lines. Here I have the plane on the new marks, but I haven't changed the battery yet, so we can see that it's dramatically nose heavy. The marks on the left, right here, are where the battery used to be, and this is where it is now, moved towards the rear of the plane. I think this is going to be just a little bit conservative, but I'm going to start out there and maybe tweak it a little bit at the field. Here the plane is back on the balancer with the battery in a new location, and it'll stay level almost by itself. Just touch it a little bit and it'll sink to the tail or to the nose. I know the neutral point looks to be just a little bit tail down. And that's okay. From here I'm going to make final adjustments at the field when we get to fly it. And we'll move the battery just little bits in the directions I think it needs until we get it where it feels right. So here's another time you find out that I screwed up. But I showed you how I fixed it. And now I'll get it to the field and see how well I fixed it.